What's up, guys? What's going on, man? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, man, and we are diving deep into Genesis. We have uh, gone through all of the books so far, except for this last part, man. We're at the end. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. Genesis is a big book, man, so you should be glad and proud that we've gone through this if you stuck with uh, with me through this entire time, man. But we are in the Genesis saga where we have Joseph meeting his brothers and then his brothers going back home, talking to their father about uh, what happened to them while they were in Egypt. And we ended with the father saying, Benjamin cannot go. No, Joseph, you can't have him. So what's going to happen now? That's the part that we're on. We're in Genesis 43, 1 through 10. So if you haven't read it, go ahead, stop the tape, check it out, see what it has to say, come back, and we'll answer the four questions. If you've already read it, man, let's dive on in. Let's see, uh, uh, let's see what's happening. The first question is, what's going on? What's happening in the narrative? And uh, what we got here is there's a huge famine in the land. And it's big, kaved, heavy. It's burdensome, man, that the famine is is just uh, intense and it's continuing. And so uh, Israel's like, hey, um, why don't y'all get a little food for us down in Egypt? <laughs> I like how he says it, too. He's like, why don't you guys get just a little food for us down in Egypt? Like he don't remember what what the prerogative was of Joseph when he sent them back from Egypt with the first uh, food that he gave them. And if he did forget, um, then he is reminded quickly by Judah. Uh, and he says, hey, you don't remember that, man. We can't go down there unless you give Benjamin. If Benjamin come with us, man, he said, don't show your face in this land again unless you have your younger brother. He's like, so if you give us a younger brother, we'll go down there, man. We'll get some food. But if you don't, we can't. You know what I'm saying? And so... He's like, uh, uh, and if we don't do this, man, if if, if this doesn't happen, he's like, we die. It says, not only us die, man. He says, but but our kids, you die, we die, and our children die. Like, this is the plight of the situation. Because still, Israel doesn't want to give up his son. He's like, nah, man, I can't do it. But... uh, Root or Joseph, Joseph, I'm sorry, but uh, Judah says, I will give my life as forfeit for his, like as a surety. And if I do not bring him back, then you can have my life. And he's like, and I will be in your shame and debt forever. And so uh, Judah offers up his life. A little bit better than what Reuben does, man, in the last time we saw. He's like, I'll give you my two children. But Judah offers his own life. He offers his own life. And then um, he acquiesced. He acquiesced. He says, go ahead. Go ahead. So what does this, what does this scripture have to say about God? Well, I think it talks about the providential nature of God. And in the last episode, we talked a little bit about that, how God has sovereignty and he's doing these things for a purpose. And we're seeing these purposes take place as uh, God is causing food to stay scarce in the land, which was going to be a famine anyway. The, the vision that Joseph uh, interpreted for Pharaoh was stating that this famine was going to be seven years and it's going to be super intense. And so God is obviously fulfilling his promise in that as this famine continues all over the world. But then it's also the promise that he made to Abraham as his family would be slaves in the land for 400 years. And so he's moving them down into Egypt one step at a time. And this is the next step for this thing to occur. And so this, this is God moving for his purposes, controlling the situation, allowing for Benjamin to uh, uh, be released from his father's clutches, which are so strong, which are so strong. So he's being released from his father's clutches in order to go down to meet with Joseph. And then we're going to see that there's a chain reaction as well that's going to happen between um, uh, between uh, um, Joseph meeting his brother. But 
what does this say about man? Well, I think we must set our priorities. That's one thing. It's like um, Israel wants to keep his son. Jacob wants to keep his son. Benjamin with him. But uh, he has to let go now because not only is um, his son in danger in this situation because if they don't get no food, Benjamin's going to die anyway. But also, generations to come, his grandkids are in danger. His sons are in danger. And so now it's, it's his priority has changed just, just a tad bit because he has to now see that letting Benjamin go down to Egypt is more beneficial than keeping him with him. And we also find that uh, as humans, man, we tend to forget. We got, somebody told me we got great or broken rememberers or great forgetters. Is uh, Israel shalantly, a nonchalantly, or however you want to say it, asked for them boys to go down and get some more food from Egypt. Did he not remember that he said uh, that uh, Joseph said he had to bring Benjamin down there? Did he forget that? Sometimes I think as human beings, we forget what we don't want to remember. And uh, that could be a, a problem for us, uh, especially in regards to uh, living a life called by, the, by, by God. And finally, I think it's, uh, man, we got to stand in the gap. We got to stand in the gap. See, Judah said he would stand in a place for Benjamin. He would bear the responsibility. He would take the burden if Benjamin didn't come. That's a hard thing to do, to place himself in that situation. But I think that's what God has called us to. And so uh, how do we apply these truths to our lives that, that God is providential, controls all things, holds all things, and then moves uh, to, for his purposes in these things through us. And then that we got to set these priorities or, or, or uh, stand in the gap or how do, we, how do we reconcile those things to do today? Not just think about, but to apply. Well, I, I think we got to think about what is going on in our life right now. <clears throat> what is happening in our life right now? that we are not seeing it correctly. We're not looking at it from the right perspective or we're just completely pushing it aside in our mind so that we can do what we want to do. What are we doing in that aspect? Sometimes uh, even when we think that we are moving for the purposes of God, we are setting aside a calling that he's called us to, or maybe we're setting aside a decision that he has placed in our heart. We're forgetting about those things or not seeing them, uh, not remembering them, not recalling them because we want to do what we want to do. Think about that today. See that today. And, and, and if you're walking in that, because if you are, man, you got to repent, turn to him and do as he says. Hey, I appreciate you guys for listening as we're going through the book of Genesis. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens next in the story. As you guys, uh, as, we, as I, I get to meet with you guys again in the next episode.